This is my goal, the Max Cape. I want to do it in the shortest gameplay time possible as an Iron Man. Because I chose to be an Iron Man, this little status symbol next to my name prevents me from trading other players or using the Grand Exchange, so I have to get all items myself. Since pathing is essential in an Iron Man, a lot of theory crafting and planning goes into this Max Cape run. And we have the perfect guide to follow. Previously, we just finished 43 player locking those overhead prayers, and it was now time to get into the dangers of questing. Our main goal at the moment is to find a way to make money, since GP early game is pretty hard to do without losing too much time and XP. So what will we be doing today? Well, to make our money, we're actually going to be making earth battle stabs. We've already made a bunch of molten glass out of furnace, but the 20 XP drops we got from that wasn't the reason I was doing it. It's now time for step 2 with the glass, which was blow it into unpowered orbs. Blowing orbs is a very slow and AFK method if you were to train it normally at a bank, and I would never even think about AFKing on my speedrun account, so I head to Thieving Artifact so that I can gain some thieving XP while blowing the glass. This way, I'm running around and not completely wasting my time while AFKing because I'm getting some passive thieving XP. This thieving method specifically for Iron Man is significantly better than blackjacking due to the crafting XP you get per hour. This is the main reason we tried to avoid blackjacking as much as we could. Towards the end of every lap, there's a fat Thief King speed drop that scales with every level, and because we need run energy for the next lap anyway, we teleport to Ferox to restore our run energy, and conveniently there's a bank there as well so we can grab more Molten Glass. I have to go through all 1600 Molten Glass, so a lot of level ups were coming in both crafting and thieving. Here I am hitting level 58 thieving. And not even an hour and a half later, here's 64 thieving. And as you can see from our crafting level, we're already level 55. And coming up just short of 65 thieving, I'm now out of glass, finishing at 56 crafting as well. All of these thieving levels help prepare me for desert treasure, which is another requirement for earth battle stats. Just a friendly reminder, I need to do birdhouse runs until 80 hunter, so it's important for me to do them as often as possible, since they are only ready every 50 minutes. I would be limited IRL time if I don't do them often enough. A lot of my birdhouse runs are done on mobile at work, so it's pretty rare where I have a clip of me doing them. I'm only doing 3 birdhouses, getting me about 3k XP per run, meaning I have to do this 700 times for 80 hunter. I'm a little over halfway there at the time of this clip, here I am hitting level 46 out of 80. It was now time to work my way towards desert treasure, and one of the prequests is Temple of Ikov, which requires 20 limpwort roots. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I am an Iron Man meaning I can't simply buy them from somebody else like Simple Folk, I have to actually get them myself, the morally correct way. The best way to go about doing this is to do easy farming contracts, which require 45 farming in the farming guild. A farming contract is given by Guildmaster Jane, and she tells me to grow something and will reward me with the seed pack after I harvest it. I was hoping to get Wimpwort seeds from them. And thankfully in my first contract completion, we got them. With the Wimpwords grown, I was able to finally do this quest. And complete it for the absolute fat amount of range XP. Which also got me 1200 total. And now it's time for the final step before we become rich, Desert Treasure. There's a lot of boss fights in this one, but with overhead prayers, I'm prepared. First boss fight is super easy, I just have to pray melee and mage him with the water spell. Remember how I mentioned thieving level affecting this quest? I have to unlock this chest with the lockpick for the next boss, and to do that, I have to succeed 3 picks in a row. At 64 thieving, the chances of me succeeding was 6.14%, or about 1 in 17. So if I go unlucky here, I'd have to bank a couple times, and trust me, it was not fast to get here. Thankfully, I somehow clutched this, and I get it on my 6th try. The second boss fight is a little scary because you have to be careful not to let him hit you, since when he does, he drains your prayer and will kill you. So I have to play around a little and make sure that NPCs or something is blocking it from hitting me every attack. It's a little of a hassle, but I do end up killing him before he kills me. Third boss, definitely the easiest. If I flick my prayer from range and melee every 0.6 seconds, he'll do the tango dance with me, it won't hurt me. Last boss, and probably the hardest because the snow area constantly drains your stats, run energy, and prayer. However, I still managed to kill him before he killed me, 
And it was the final boss fight of this, and I still had zero deaths in this quest. Things were looking good. The final step of this quest was to take all of my gems from the bosses and bring them to the pyramid, and then run through the pyramid to finish the quest. Entering the pyramid, there are four floors I have to run through. You may notice from my inventory that I have a lot of energy potions, some swordfish for food in case I take damage, and an anti-poison. I didn't bring any prayer potions because I figured I could just flick and preserve my prayer, but in every floor there will be NPCs that can attack me and I will be taking damage. However, it's not just the NPCs that can damage me. There's also an RNG possibility of hitting a trap that will make you fall through the pyramid and have to restart from the first floor again. I thought that there was no way to avoid this, just run, spam click the minimap, and hope for the best. However, I was streaming this quest, and my chat informed me that if I opened my stats for an interface while running, it was impossible to fall through any traps. I love this idea, so I mindlessly opened an interface so that I can't fail. One problem I have with opening the stat interface is that this entire time so far, I have not enabled my protection prayer once. I completely forgot about it. So, what do you think's gonna happen? I died. I was so annoyed at this, I decided to just use my hacker program and teleport back here. I could not be bothered running back. Just to be clear on what happened, because I was so confused at the time, remember how I mentioned I can hit traps if I don't have the interface open? What happened was it seems that on the tick I got hit on and died, or maybe one tick after, I have no clue, but I seem to have hit a trap. I mentioned that it can spawn me back to 4-1, so after spawning in Lumbridge for my death, the trap animation triggered, and now here I am. Here's my live reaction to what happened as well. <gasps> what? Alright. Kind of forgot that those can do- Let's fucking go! Holy shit! After all of that, I still have zero prayer potions, but I make it on my next lap running out of prayer points just before the final entrance. The quest is now complete. With Desert Treasure complete, we were just about ready to start making our Earth Orbs for battle stats. The Earth Obelisk is located in Edgeville Dungeon, and we can now make Pedewa Teleport tabs to get there. I'm now going to do two inventories for 50 Tele tabs. After all my tabs are made, it was time to try a method that's going to be extremely useful for this account long term, but we've never done it before. It's a method called Gravestone Deposit. It's important that I have some items besides unpowered orbs go to my gravestone, so I grab some junk items in my bank. It was now time to set up our Gravestone Deposit. So I made my way towards the place to make earth orbs. When there, I politely let Charizard kill me as close to the obelisk as I could get. I now had a gravestone with 15 minutes to get back, but before going back, there was another step I had to do. My gravestone is currently holding unpowered orbs, however, it's important to note that there is a way to get even more orbs in there. If I die anywhere in the game, my items still go to my original grave. So I grab my games necklace along with a full inventory of unpowered orbs and make my way towards Corporal Beast. The noob couldn't even one shot me, so I consider it a pretty close fight considering our combat levels, but I did end up losing. Now I grab my runes I need for enchanting the orbs, a looting bag, and a full inventory of more orbs. At this point, it's important that I explain what the looting bag is. It's not as simple as it sounds where it's a bag that holds your items and you can conveniently use it for an extra 28 inventory slots. The bag only works for storage, and only in the wilderness. This means that if I want to withdraw from it, I have to leave the wilderness and go to a bank. Now that I'm back at the obelisk, I can cast enchant and make my whole inventory into earth orbs. It is possible to AFK this, but if you manually cast each time, it speeds it up a lot. After my whole inventory, I use my looting bag to store all of my earth orbs that I created, and I go to my deposit gravestone to grab the unpowered orbs. The game's necklace inside the gravestone is essential because it makes the gravestone stay, whereas if it wasn't in my gravestone, I would accidentally loot all the orbs and the gravestone deposit would just disappear. After doing this for an hour, I was able to get 53,000 magic XP per hour, which equates to 750 orbs. 
Here I am hitting 65 magic. And nearly two hours later, I'm still maintaining 750 to 800 an hour. And each orb is about 2k profit, so this would be about 1.5 to 1.6 mil an hour. It might not sound like much, but at this stage in the account, because I'm an Iron Man who can't train anybody or use the Grand Exchange, this is pretty good. And it gets me enough GP to get everything I need before I unlock our first big money making method, which will be Sepulchre. That's still very far away though. Right before running out of orbs, this gets me yet another magic level, level 66. Now that all of our earth orbs are made, we have to do one more quest to make battle staves, hand in the sand. This quest grants access to the wizard's guild shop, which guess what we can buy from there? That's right, battle staves. It took me a bit to figure out how exactly I should go about this, but in the end, I decided the best method was to dump my entire cash stack in battle staves, out them all into orbs, and then come back with a larger cash stack and repeat the process. So if you guys are ever looking for a live example of the rich get richer, this life hack is number one. Once I spent my entire cash stack, I wasn't going to just stand around and alk them. I went straight back to artifacts to craft them. I brought my alk runes so that once I finished making 14, I could start alking, and for the most part, I would be able to alk 10 to 14 per trip, and the times when I couldn't do all 14, I would just save for noted for later on. Just a quick breakdown to anybody who is confused as to how this is the amount of profit it is, Bearing in mind that I'm an Iron Man and had to get all the supplies myself, the orbs cost me nothing since I was making them for crafting XP, and I go to the Wizards Guild to buy battle staffs for 7,000 coins each. Once I attach the orbs that I spent 0 GP on, I can alk the Earth Battle Staff for 9,300 gold. Subtract the Nature Rune cost, and it's about 2.1k profit per staff. I'm doing 1650 staffs, so this is about 3.4 mil cash to get me to Sepulchre. On top of all that hard earned GP, we also get level ups such as 68 thieving, fast forwarding to 71 thieving, and ending at 63 crafting with over 2.5 mil GP. At this point, I'm going to stop making GP and save my leftover 200 ores for something else in the future. Something even more profitable. But for now, let's just hope that this amount of GP can get us through next episode. We will be spending our hard earned cash. Now it's time to visit the progress for this episode. On the left are my stats from last week, and on the right are my current stats. We fell under EHP again due to having to make money, but that's expected and okay. Iron Man EHP is very punishing, so it's unrealistic to always hold 1 to 1. Here's an easier visual for the gains along with the current EHP. I'm now at 98 EHP while having 118 hours played at the time of this clip. This means we're 20 hours behind, but with our goal of being 1800 hours or 75 days played, we're allowed to fall 200 hours behind before we don't hit the goal. So we're in fair shape at the moment, especially given my quest points. With all that being said, I will see you all next time. As always, TY for watching, don't forget to like the video if you guys enjoyed it, and maybe comment and subscribe as well. Peace out.